akkor most át fogok kapcsolni angolra. Ugye az van, hogy aki magyarul szeretné hallani a történéseket, annak a fejhallgató egyes csatornájára kell kapcsolnia. For those of you who would like to listen to this conversation in English, you have to go on channel 2 of the headphones. Is that correct, Moni? Yes. <laughs> Um, and, és mostantól angolul fogok beszélni, and from now on I will speak in English. Um, my name is Tessa Udvarhelyi, and I'm um, the director of the School of Public Life, which is an activist school in Budapest, and um, I'm one of the organizers of this conference. Um, and I really wanted to have a panel, actually this panel, <laughs> on this conference, uh, for many reasons. One of them is that Um, as you saw in the previous panel, there are, I wouldn't say a lot, but there are a few good examples from Western Europe where progressive politics or leftist politics um, were successful and uh, people who represented these ideals were elected into local governments and they can actually uh, bring about real change in, in the cities of Western Europe. Um, and I always have this general feeling in Hungary that we have um, our self-esteem is really low and we tend to believe that all these things that happen over there will never happen over here in Eastern Europe. And, um, and I can very much resonate with, uh, with what Laura said in the previous panel about the work of imagination, that if we cannot imagine that we can actually do this, we will never be able to do this. So I think this, this panel is mostly about um, expanding our imagination and trying to imagine ourselves as, as people who are actually implementing progressive leftist politics in Eastern European cities. Um, and the other reason why I, I really wanted to have this panel is because um, municipalism, which was kind of the... Um, the idea behind um, organizing this conference, which is the idea that um, one way of changing society is, is uh, to change it through cities, to, through changing cities and local, local communities. And one key idea of municipalism is the feminization of politics, um, which is about trying to, um, to, put, peop to put women into, um, into decision-making positions, into positions of power, into positions of of actual influence and, um, and um, making sure that the values that they represent are also represented by our politics. So, um, so this panel will be about basically these two topics and um, uh, the, the participants in the, in the panel will be Iva Ivšić and Hanna Jusic from who are local representatives in Zagreb from the, from the movement or party rather called Zagreb Janash. Um, and uh, they are sitting there, and <laughs> they will introduce themselves. And then Joanna Erbel, who is a former mayoral candidate, uh, member of the Polish Congress of Urban Movements, and currently the director of the Housing Innovation Office. And she's there. And Lenka Burgerova, who is an assembly member of the city of Prague, and deputy mayor for development of urban planning, architecture, and public space in the seventh district of Prague, who is sitting next to me. And, um, I will have three main topics that I would like to, to discuss with you, and then I hope to get questions or comments from the audience, but we can also e ask each other, qu each other questions and, and discuss them. And um, the, first, uh, the first question that I would like to discuss with you is, I would say rather personal, but of course in the sense of personal being political. Um, how did you get into activism? And then also how did you get into politics? What is the difference between the two? Is there a difference between the two? And do you, do you see a difference in the kind of impact that you can have on society as an activist or as a politician? Is there a difference? Is there similarities? And what do you see as your impact today as you are all working at some level of government? Good evening. Um, how I get to activism? Hmm. Uh, I think I was activist since I was 16, because uh, those days I saw uh, a chapel with, uh, which was 
really in derelict state. It was a part of our gymnasium, our high school. And um, I was like young enough to go to the city council uh, to claim that they should give us some money to repair the chapel. And uh, they were so surprised that they said, uh, okay. And they really gave us in the late 90s uh, quite a lot of money. And uh, after a lot of struggles and after years, the chapel is finally uh, repaired. And this is how I realized that uh, sometimes it's just about that you ask uh, the politicians or you say them that they should do something and maybe they, they will do it. Uh, after this experience, uh, I was uh, active in uh, uh, different ways. Uh, uh, I was uh, promoting the architectural heritage, uh, speaking publicly about the uh, uh, about the former factories and their influence on the urban fabric and they, that we should keep them in our cities and so. And uh, then uh, I was teaching at the university when uh, my, my friend uh, came to me and say, uh, said, okay, uh, this evening we have a city council in District 7 and you, you, should, you should come because uh, there's uh, some problem. They uh, want to build a big shopping center on the place of uh, former assembly of transport uh, of Jewish people and uh, we sh should do something with it. And it was in the same time that we had uh, some other problems in the district like the lack of places in the kindergartens and so. And I said, okay, then let's go. Uh, and uh, the evening was really a surprise for me. I never went to the city council assembly before. Uh, we spent there eight hours because they wanted us to leave. Uh, and finally, two o'clock in the morning, we went to this topic. So um, this was the final experience where we decided that we should go for election and change. Uh, maybe uh, the way how, how the city district, uh, uh, how, how the, the city assembly, the district assembly is behaving towards us as the neighbors. So, and that was it. And then we had to collect uh, the signatures of 7% uh, of uh, the, the people living in the district, which was like 5,000 signatures. And we did it. And yeah, that's basically it. And we, we hoped for uh, some, uh, some votes to, to have influence. Uh, and we ended up with 45% of the votes. <clears throat> so uh, after a couple of months I had to accept the responsibility uh, and I left the university and um, I started to work, uh, work as responsible for urban development of my district. I was wondering uh, with what to start. I thought that uh, I would say that the uh, first time I had the contact with uh, politics was <coughs> in 2006. And at that time uh, we had like elections, local elections in, uh, in Warsaw. And the Green Party, uh, like my teacher in, from Institute of Sociology, who was like the leader of the Green Party, the local, uh, lo uh, the local Green Party, he asked me whether I would accept an offer to be on the lists for the local uh, dis district council. And I was then 22, quite young, involved in the feminist movement then. And uh, there was completely no chance to, uh, that I could get into the district council. But it was the first time uh, whether I asked myself uh, if something like happened, uh, like in the lottery. Uh, and if I would be possible to get into, would it be okay? Would it be okay to be on the other side and take the responsibility that uh, Lenka was talking about? Um, and then I decided that yes, it, it might be interesting. It's extremely scary, but it's interesting. Of course, nothing happened. 
because we were we didn't even manage to uh, put people through the, into the district council, no, the city council, because it was uh, quite uh, too early. But there was something what happened like before uh, uh, in uh, 2002. In 2001, I was like studying sociology and I was extremely unhappy with my life. Uh, I was uh, extremely unhappy uh, like studying in the, uh, in the institute which uh, seemed to be open, but somehow it was sexist. I was feeling that well, I was treated in a different way than other people. Uh, I wasn't cycling yet, I wasn't vegan yet, but I knew that I was a kind of uh, different than, uh, than the majority. And I wanted, and, uh, and then I, uh, once I realized that I either uh, I would start being active and try to change the environment to make some place for the people like me or uh, my colleagues who are like uh, homosexual, bisexual, queer, or for people who are simply different because they are from the other country, or I will simply die like, because I was like uh, I, was having, I was having these suicidal thoughts, things like you often have when you don't have uh, control over uh, the reality. And then I decided that I have to act. In uh, 2009, uh, I moved to Berlin for uh, one year uh, on this like, PhD Erasmus exchange. And then out of sudden, like there were more people like me. Everything was normal and uh, even boring. Uh, so I decided to come back to Warsaw because it was not boring yet. And uh, it was the moment when the urban movements uh, uh, were uh, growing. Uh, were growing. Uh, I remember when we started our, like, um, our NGO, which is called Duopolis, because the idea was to bring some ideas from Berlin to Warsaw, or maybe from Warsaw to Berlin, but frankly speaking, we're more interested in like, importing the ideas into our city and changing our city. We, started the f uh, we launched the first discussion and uh, 200 people came out of sudden. And uh, it was the moment that we started to feel that there are more and more of us and uh, we have to do something to act together. Uh, it was uh, as well the generational change that uh, um, my generation, I was born in 84, uh, wanted to find a different sphere, different uh, field of action. Like the big politics, it was already taken, so, uh, but urban movements weren't. And because we were traveling a lot, mostly because like uh, Erasmus Socrates exchanges, we knew that you can live in a different way in different cities, and we w wanted to bring it uh, uh, to Warsaw and to other cities. In 2011, we started uh, uh, Congress of Urban Movement, which was like national network of different organizations. And what was quite interesting, because that time we uh, took one quite important uh, political decision. Uh, we decided that we will make alliances with everyone, except of uh, fascists, uh, but uh, even with people with the rightest ideas, and with people with whom I would have many disagreements when it goes to the women's rights, uh, abortion, uh, we are s or church, position of church, we were simply avoiding it. Because we knew that we have to fight for, uh, for the park, to get away from the, for, uh, from the highway, uh, what was quite interesting, the first urban movements uh, in Poland, they were quite uh, liberal. When we had like first hand thesis, uh, we didn't have housing then. Because we had some people who are very active in this like sustainable development of transport, who are liberal and who thought that you have to simply buy your flat. And uh, like paying it from the public money, it's not something which is like obvious. And uh, it started to be obvious uh, one layer, year later, when we uh, adjusted this like uh, urban mo movement uh, postulate, and then in the third uh, round we even adjusted in, in a way that we started to do, do um, this kind of change. I don't know how it's in Hungarian, but in Polish you can use uh, show uh, gender while you are speaking, like in German, for example. So you have this uh, in Hungarian, don't have it. Uh, but uh, we are using this form. Uh, like mieszkańcy i mieszkanki, which means like female citizens and male citizens. And we are using it, it uh, everywhere. And uh, then uh, in 2014, there were local elections and we have to um, make the decision. 
We have to make the decision whether it's uh, something correct to go into politics, to stop the acting on the local and to go into politics, which was not very obvious because it's, they were saying like, oh, either you're an activist or you are a politician, you have to choose, which is not true. And then we have a second version of this uh, discussion, uh, which was either you are activist uh, or you are uh, going to work in the municipality. Um, uh, we had this a kind of division of the people first who uh, thought that politics is something really bad and it's nasty, ugly, and you shouldn't go into it. And then we had another round of the people who, uh, who were telling that uh, you, should, uh, you shouldn't get employed because if you get employed, uh, you'll get corrupted. Uh, and uh, we had this a kind of huge division and some of the people stayed outside and some of the people like me, for example, they went uh, into uh, the structures of the, uh, of the municipality. And what was quite interesting because uh, um, this paradigm of urban movements started to be so strong uh, that uh, most of the uh, leading parties, uh, liberals and sometimes liberal conservative parties, started to take on our postulates. And uh, it was quite interesting because uh, if something like this happens, you don't know whether it's a success or failure because it's only change of the, of the language. But what for me was uh, quite interesting that uh, when I got employed in the city council, uh, or first in the kind of company, but working for the city council, um, and started working on the housing policy because I was coordinator of the Warsaw housing uh, policy in 2030, which I'll be tell telling more tomorrow. Um, the framework uh, was more progressive than the things I had in my leftist program. And uh, it was surprising that uh, when I was uh, and trying to get elected in, in, in autumn 2014, and then I started working on this housing postulates from within the structure, only two years after, the reality has changed so much that I, I had a different starting point. And... Uh, mm, what was as well another, uh, another different, and then, uh, because I'm on the position always of this like radical pragmatism, uh, when I got an uh, offer to work um, for the biggest, for the company responsible for the biggest national program, which is uh, um, led by the far right, the same uh, rightist party that is demolishing our democracy, uh, getting away women's rights, I agreed. Uh, because uh, I knew that only from within uh, you can do something. That you, it's, uh, from, in, from my perspective, it was ir irresponsible uh, to get away the offer uh, and not to take the, the job when uh, the aim of the program is to build uh, one, uh, 100,000 houses, which is quite, quite a lot. And uh, what was even more surprising that I started to work this as a kind of advisor to the board. Uh, at the moment, I'm the director of the Housing Innovation Office, which means I have my own team and probably we'll be, and we are working with uh, other, uh, other groups. And uh, I think it's a kind of successful because we have changed some of the programs, but uh, there's always a, a price that you pay. When I uh, started to running the local campaign for, for a mayor, I lost one third of my friends. When I went to the, um, into the structures of the municipality, uh, another 30. When I joined the National Polish program, another 20. And uh, so when I look uh, like into, into the past, I see that most of the people with whom I was like in this like grassroots uh, moment, uh, uh, somehow we cannot talk anymore. Of course we can talk, but we uh, don't have the field of the uh, cooperation because the position of me as a corrupted uh, pragmatist uh, activist who is uh, inside, it's uh, really different than uh, the position of p people uh, who are uh, more in this like dog watch uh, paradigm or like uh, radical uh, and uh, when someone asks what is better, probably none is better. That you have to have people like in all the positions who share the same uh, mm, 
probably how you say, I don't know how to call it, it's a kind of, kind of a same of vision of the uh, perfect society, uh, even though, uh, even if they cannot talk with each other anymore, uh, because as it often happens in the leftist initiatives and uh, radical urban movement, uh, we quarrel a lot uh, uh, over small things that uh, s seems for us uh, kind of fundamental, but, but from the wider perspective, uh, from the wider perspective, uh, uh, aren't. And for sure, when uh, I'm, I'm sure that if uh, all of my friends were inside the municipality and no one, no one was outside. I couldn't be as successful uh, implementing some uh, postulates uh, uh, as I am. Thank you. Eva and Hannah. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Eva. I'm from, like uh, Tessa said, I'm from Zagreb, from political part from Zagreb and Ash. So how did I get to activism and then politics? Uh, I, the first of all, I think it was like a collective action, especially the, the one when getting to, to politics. And activism, I was like 14, 15, 16. I come from a like, very small 50,000 people uh, city in Croatia, which was actually the, like, the industrial center of Yugoslavia. And like when I was a teenage, the, we had a war and uh, the city was like falling apart. Uh, the, the industry was uh, destroyed, the, the unemployment was like rousing. Uh, many people like lost their jobs. Uh, our fathers were like, uh, had this PTSD, post-traumatic like, syndromes after war. Uh, and uh, there were some other people who started to go to church and started to get uh, to have like more and more money. And I was like angry. Like I, so I was seeing when I was like very young something which, which was like kind of which was like injustice and uh, and yes then I and my like the people I was surrounded with we decided to to do something and, and like in those years we we were just like fighting for the space where we could have like concerts and uh, I don't know to talk to read books and things like that uh, and uh, and. Actually, this was the period when in Croatia the the, the transformation from the socialist uh, economy uh, uh, went to like uh, to capitalist, and uh, it was the period when all the industry and like the the production and like the economic basis was like totally destroyed. It was privatized, and most of the companies and uh, big factories were, were destroyed. And uh, and I was young there <laughs> then, and like in the in. 2000s, uh, after this like first wave of privatization, uh, it started the second wave, and uh, they started to pri um, like open the space for privatizing uh, public services, health uh, healthcare system, uh, uh, educational system, and so on. And uh, this was the th that was the period when we were like uh, uh, students. And we had this like huge, uh, in 2009, uh, we had this huge student protests and we were actually fighting against the, the privatization of uh, educational system and, and uh, against the scholarships which were rising in that, in that period. And uh, so we realized uh, during this protest, we, like, a, a lot of people were mobilized. And just like a few months later after the protest, we had this also like a huge mobilization uh, against the, again, um, uh, uh, building like a huge shopping mall in the, in the city center, uh, uh, in the, like in the public space, in the street and the, and the park. And uh, so we mobilized again against this uh, building of this uh, garage and shopping center. Uh, and we kind of, uh, so many people were mobilized and we, we kind of got like the, the strength. We, we realized, okay, now we, we can do it. And uh, so we formed a lot of, uh, of we founded uh, like different uh, NGOs through which we uh, address the questions of, yes, social and economic, uh, in economical inequalities, uh, um, uh, this, all, all of the problems which which happened during the 90s and with the privatization of uh, of the like industry and the economy uh, and uh, so we formed a lot of uh, i mean a lot we formed a few of uh, ngos and we started to like uh, for, um, form like a network between dif di these different ngos but also with uh, trade unions uh, and we like through years we 
kind of um, got like more and more, like, like bigger and bigger and we mobilized more and more people. And uh, so two years ago, we decided, okay, now it's the time, the, the, the time when we can uh, like pass, uh, go from act only activism to, to, to politics. And it, it, this was also, uh, we, we talked about it like for three years even before, but it was very hard for us uh, to, for me also to, to like make this decision and say yes, now we are going into this, into, in, into, uh, into politics in the political arena because we have to kind of change our uh, like habitus because activist is not the same as politicians. But on the other hand, we realized that we th that we have the the knowledge in organizing. We had like this social capital. We had all of uh, already this like network of different NGOs and trade unions. So we we knew that we have to and can use this like capital we had and the social capital we had in uh, by like um, uh, entering into a political arena and the other thing what what happened actually was like in the po uh, in the political scene we had like these two main parties like the social democrats and the um, like center right and, cent uh, and center left party but with with the same economical um, uh, agenda which was which was like neoliberal, and uh, so in these like like two two years ago, we realized that people were uh, uh, they, they just didn't believe anymore in this like party system in democracy. They kind of people realized that it's it's just uh, illusion that like the political elite, elites are like detached from the people, and that they have we don't have the the space to to actually to make decisions about like our lives. And uh, and there were like a lot of um, disappointed uh, social democrats voters. So we realized, okay, we have to we have to do it now, and we have to we have to use this. So yeah, we decided, and we we entered. We uh, we did a campaign in three months and uh, entered the local government. So it was kind of the <laughs> my way. <laughs> Have you agreed that Eva will tell you everything about the social context? So I have only my personal story to tell. Uh, so I don't have an uh, activist background. I came straight to politics uh, because when Zagreb and Nash was being formed, they decided that they will comprise out of uh, uh, people that come from activism and uh, people that are just uh, citizens that want to change things. And they needed some people that would be like... Uh, uh, the s people that have mes media visibility and uh, I, I'm a film director so they approached me and said okay do you want to become a part of us and, for, uh, and I said yes because I believed in what they were doing and uh, I was trying to change many things in my own field within, within the Croatian Directors Guild and I realized that this is not really that these people are not my people and that these are my people so and with time i got into a, c a, s a neighborhood council and I, and i realized that i'm i don't want to be this poster girl for for zagreb and Aish, that i really want to do things so within time tr through these two years i kind of got into all these things much deeper than i re that, that, that i planned yes Thank you. I, I have a follow-up question. Just as you were uh, talking, I had this question, so you couldn't prepare for this. Um, which is, uh, what, do you, what do you think is the, um, the difference in the nature of power uh, when you are an activist and when you are a politician? Do, do you, is there a difference? Or is it good? Is it bad? What, what's, what's, what's the nature of power when you are inside or outside? It's much easier if you're activist. It's much, it's much easier uh, if you're uh, if you're a politician. You're responsible for the budget. It's not only about that you and you have to do the things. You have to deliver results. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, this is a little bit more complicated. <laughs> Uh, you are and you're responsible for the results you're responsible uh, for the budget if you run for elections you promise something you're responsible that you keep your promise and either you have the budget or you have to find the budget 
you're responsible for doing it properly and you're responsible for delivering the results. Yeah, this is interesting what Lenka said, that you cannot run away, <laughs> simply. if you, Once you are in, uh, you cannot say, oh, mm, I have my life, private life, I have other uh, things that usually uh, you can, you, uh, are, that consumes your time. When you are politicians, you, uh, I think you have to uh, deal with the re reality and to, to see that um, that being inside and having the power not always gives you the tools that you were fantasizing, fantasizing uh, to have. It's not like this that you are in and out of sudden you can do this. Uh, and it's the same when you are a politician or uh, when you are like within the structure as I was as a, as a member of, of one of the offices responsible for housing. You somehow know how to do it. Uh, but, for example, you are like in the city of Warsaw, you have uh, 8,000 uh, people working in the structures. And uh, you have to work in a way that um, either you can mm, motivate them, uh, you, you have to motivate people to believe in your dream, and uh, you have to motivate them to be creative, um, thinking about future, not creative like um, blocking change. Like for me, it was like uh, really surprising. Then, uh, although I had like the green line from the, the deputy mayor uh, who employed me to uh, do something with the uh, housing policy and coordinate the uh, the process, uh, there were many, many people like in the middle of the structure who simply had different opinion. And uh, they didn't care that this is... Uh, and I think this is something which is like specific uh, in our region. Because I remember when uh, one of my colleagues, um, he went to England and I, he asked the question, how is it possible that you implement all these programs uh, so fast? And how you know how to do this? Don't you have any problem? And, and um, the person didn't understand the question. Uh, he said, uh, this is the order of the prime minister. We simply all do this. I think like in our context, uh, uh, when you are in, inside, you take the responsibility as a politician or a person without the structure um, for the people who don't want that change. When you are activist, you can like go in and go out uh, uh, and uh, easily say, oh, I have an idea. I don't know how to implement it. You are the experts, you are inside, you are the politicians. So uh, somehow the position of the activists is, uh, I think, a bit, uh, a bit easier, I would say. Maybe one more, <coughs> one more short remark. After the election, you have to forget that uh, you was elected just by mm -hmm. certain number of people. Because from that moment on, you are there for everyone and uh, you are not there only for those ones who voted for you. And you are responsible for equal, uh, that, that the voices of the people are heard equally. Yeah. And this is sometimes quite a hard, to be honest, because uh, you have to hurt and you have to consider also uh, the uh, voices of the people you uh, that are not yours. They are not going to, into your direction. Yeah? That they are, they are not your, your friends. Uh, and I don't speak about politics, uh, like left or right or whatever, because on the uh, this lower municipal level, it's uh, maybe not that much about uh, the, the high politics, because uh, uh, the clean streets, is it right or left? But you have to you have to hear everyone, and you have to really consider you ha you because you are there for all the people who are living in your district. And to be honest, this is sometimes really not easy. And, and to add something, uh, there is as well the difference beyond the emotional uh, level. When you are like inside or you are elected politician, you cannot be angry anymore. Uh, like a lot of the power from the activism is from this ang angriness and it's okay 
Because on the other hand, uh, if you are angry, uh, mm, you don't get corrupted so easily. So uh, when someone says, oh, in our like uh, local context, no, it's impossible. It's the activist, not the politician who would say, I don't care. You have to do this. You have to find a solution. We can try to help you, but you have to find the solution. It's uh, your responsibility to find solution for our uh, problems. So this is this kind of interesting dynamics because uh, it's different. As you have different type uh, of power, the activism is a more. Uh, ang there's a lot of power in this, like angriness and uh, um, angriness, innocence, and uh, um, being a bit of ignorant. Because only if you are a bit of ignorant, uh, you are not um, stopped by the f first uh, barriers. This, this is uh, this is how I, uh, how how I, how I feel and how I see how I has changed as well when I know uh, where are the limits. I somehow uh, take these limits as something which is like more stable than it is in the reality when it turns out that there is someone who is like pushing the barriers, pushing the barriers, asking for more. And then it turns out that you can like change change the law. You can do something with finances, or you can change uh, even the paradigm, how you think about uh, some uh, some things. Uh, okay, I don't know. Maybe you know, like the situation with us is a little bit different because we are only like for two years. Uh, like being representatives and the other thing is that we entered the local government and the city government but, but we are still in, in the opposition and uh, I'm like in the local district the only one from my uh, like political platform uh, and I still perceive myself as, a, as an activist on one side and also as a like a politician on the other side and uh, what we realized is that uh, uh, in this, when we entered the the, the institutions, uh, we kind of uh, got to the source of the information, uh, which we didn't know before when being just like activists. So now we know how the like the system actually works, like the local government uh, and the system, and uh, we we have uh, we have like uh, the materials and the documents and the information the the, the public actual and we never knew before and now we are uh, like uh, yeah we are posting them on like uh, social networks we are talking about them in the newspapers so from that perspective I think it's like great that we entered the institution and I don't like think it's uh, it's like better or worse or it's easier or uh, than like when we were activists only in the way that we have the the information now the the, the other thing which is like I would say um, the more difficult is like yes yeah I'm in the in the local district where there are 15 people uh, I'm the only one from my platform and uh, there are like 14 men uh, and it's it's horrible. They're like patriarchal. They're conservative. Uh, even those like social democrats and liberal are also conservative, and they're all the time yelling at me and uh, yeah and patronizing. And it's like really it's really really hard. And it's only it's not only my uh, situation. It's also in like other uh, local districts and also in uh, like. Um, Council in, in neighborhood council when we have where we have like only like one woman, and uh, like we are really kind of uh, exhausted already with them because they up, up till now they had maybe they had women in councils but those women like didn't talk during the and I have actually I I, I have one but I almost never see her or when she's there she she doesn't talk she's from social democrats so they they are just like oh, sorry <laughs> it's like that uh, and uh, so so they're not used to uh, hear what like and like what i have to say and like what women have to say and like they're totally i don't know um mm, i don't know they, 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 they just don't want to accept that i have an opinion <laughs> So it, th this is like something which is m like uh, which we I didn't um, uh, I, it, it it is an, an experience I didn't have before and you were like always with your people and uh, and now you have like this situation 
which is like the, now it's now I realize okay in our organization we are like feminists and, and we are fighting for the <laughs> equality also and we have problems in our organization but when when com compared to this it's like oh, wow <laughs> it's great and uh, the other thing I um, I can imagine that like it's it's different and and uh, more difficult when you are in power and you have to make decision and everything but on the other side when you say now you are not only for your people but for everyone actually when this is just like when we were um, uh, running for the for the local uh, for the city assembly and the districts, we were for actually for everyone. We were opposing like privatization of public services, and it's not like somebody says, "No, no, we are for the for the privatization." I won't say as a politician now when in the institution okay now i have to uh i'm uh, here in front of all of you so i have to say yes i mean i i think there are some things that you have to or like or, or even even the better the in like in this like district level what we decide about like this cleaning the street i mean everybody wants want clean streets so this is something what i actually didn't understand. But the first thing, yes, I, I can imagine that it's very difficult when you have to take a decision about things. And yeah, thanks. Anna, would you like to add, add something? Of course, you are there always for everyone. And we also, we were just a group of citizens. So we opposed the, the politics of uh, the previous uh, um, assembly. But uh, if you're by power, you have to take in consideration much more. Like uh, you, you have, uh, you are meeting with the opponents, and uh, you are not only pushing uh, the what you want for everyone, but you have to really hear them and also t take in consideration what they are saying, and if uh, some part of it is not. Uh, valuable, yeah, and this is this is uh, um, what um, um, it, it was not so hard for me because I'm I'm a teacher at the university, and there you are trained to do so. But uh, it's uh, like really to not only to uh, um, show that you are interested but to be really deeply interested what your opponents are saying and searching for uh, uh, good points or common points because uh, it have to be a con concordance. It shouldn't be a fight. Yeah. So this is what's, what's not so easy. Uh, um, yeah, although I wasn't an activist, I can say something about this uh, level of still being an activist because we are in opposition and just hold the mic closer. Uh, we, so uh, uh -huh, and we are not uh, really strong in our uh, neighborhood councils and district councils, but we took the the role of being these uh, really boring and persistent mosquitoes that don't let them breathe. So this is our role. I know that in my neighborhood council and now I'm in a district council that uh, I really um, we have Facebook pages for our districts where people come with their problems to us and then we say, okay, we'll try to do something. And it's really for us the, the, big, um, the big discovery when we got into them is that we are so powerless. Even those people that are, uh, that are in power, in, in, uh, in, in uh, members of the parties that are in power, on these lower level, levels they are still powerless because everything is decided in the city council and all this system is just being here as some puppet theater where people are raising hands on things that are already decided. So we uh, kind of decided that we will take the, the role of, of uh, someone who will say the emperor is naked. Do you have this? Uh, yeah, the, the, where we will show that this system is just being uh, a fire. So we, we are there to make them to to make them feel a bit sick when they come to their meetings. Okay, uh, um, and, and now on to the. Um, to the kind of second big topic and we won't have so much time for this because I really want to have time for the last part which is the is it actually possible part but first and Eva already touched on this um, how, and 
first I wanted to frame the question saying how does it feel to be a wo woman in politics, but then I, I changed it to how does it work to be a woman in politics, because I don't want it to be only about feelings, but actually uh, how does it work? And you already mentioned that you are the only woman, woman in your, in your um, council or assembly, uh, and how about the others? So does it make a difference in your social and political context, whether you are a man or a woman? Are there other women decision makers around you? Uh, how does it influence you? How does your gender influence your work and, and your position? Maybe I'm in a very different position because, as I said, we formed this uh, group of uh, citizens and there, uh, there was... Uh, uh, an equal number of women and, and men running for elections. Mm -hmm. So it was like almost uh, one uh, woman, man, woman, man, like that. Uh, so uh, when we surprisingly got this 44%, which meant that we can, we could do uh, already in uh, 2014, practically whatever we want in our district, because this was the majority. Uh, so I had uh, another a woman to to um, um, like like a support group or how to say it yeah because uh, so I am not struggling as a, as a woman in in on the district level uh, and very important for me is that uh, those uh, women are working together they are supporting each other that you have uh, that uh, and that they are taken as professionals. And this was not the problem inside the city council. Sometimes it's a problem uh, if you speak with the authorities, especially with uh, technical ones, like uh, railway authorities or uh, highway authorities or road authorities, something like that, because uh, there, let's say that uh, on those time, uh, types of assemblies, there is significantly more men than women significantly, like uh, you can be the only one in the room. And uh, I, was, uh, uh, I was always relying on uh, my profession, because I am professional, what I am bringing is not only a political uh, voice, but it's also a professional voice. Uh, I am an educated uh, urbanist, so I am responsible for urban urbanism, so I'm on the right place and doesn't matter uh, what is my gender. So th this, this was, this was uh, what, I, what I was feeling. Uh, on the city level, like the big Prague, so this is the, the another council, it's a little bit more complicated because uh, as you are getting higher, then the number of uh, women is, let's say, decreasing mm -hmm. and the number of men is increasing. And also, uh, maybe they feel that the power is bigger, the amount of money you're governing is much bigger, and then it started to be complicated. And once more, um, uh, we got like 13% uh, in this election for the Big Prague, which does mean that we are among the three groups, uh, two political parties, and this, this uh, Praha Sobie, which is a uh, movement. Uh, so we are one third of the coalition which is governing uh, the big Prague and once again we have quite a parity be between the men and women there. So uh, I'm not struggling. <laughs> Maybe Sometimes it's uh, harder on a professional level as an architect and urbanist, it's sometimes harder than in politics. But I, I, I understand that um, it can have also a very difficult uh, difficult uh, consequences uh, if you are the only one. Yeah, can really imagine. Uh, I think as well. This is uh, in our all spheres of life. If you have sexist society, it's it's not. Uh, it's at the university. It's in your workplace. In in the politics. Uh, for me, the hardest moment was the uh, campaign, uh, the local campaign uh, to be uh, a mayor, because everyone was, uh, everyone like, um, probably journalists from uh, all different areas, both like pra uh, more, more writers or liberal, 
uh, they were really interested in what I'm wearing and uh, how much my dress uh, costs. And I and I have a tailor because uh, who is with whom I work over uh, the last five years, and probably each of my dresses is cheaper than the uh, average shirt of the politician. And they don't only have shirt, but they have as well as suit, which means that probably they're spending ten times more uh, to get dressed for a conference, uh, press conference, than I do. But no one was asking them. Uh, but they were also always asking me. Uh, there was always interesting that some people from the uh, radical leftist uh, uh, environment uh, they were asking uh, why me as a feminist uh, I, I'm dressed in a feminine way, and it was somehow more interesting than what is in the program. And uh, when you are a woman and you start to be a public person and who wants to say something. You are spending a lot of time uh, answering really stupid questions. They are asking uh, about your private life. They want to know who are you are currently sleeping with. Uh, some of them are simply flirting with you. And, uh, and there's always the question what you can uh, do with it. Yeah? Uh, and there are like two strategies. Like uh, my friends from uh, the older generation who were born in the 70s, and it's not only about politics, but as well as the about the university, they were uh, using the strategy that um, they dress in a way not to uh, not to be too feminine and to be professional. They even were saying when they are like entering the class or and, or they are uh, having lecture, they are forgetting about uh, their sex and or the, the, their gender. Like my generation started using it, like uh, we are strong, beautiful, we like high heels and uh, and it's our power, and it's our power over often over these like sexist guys and but to do this you you have to have more or less like e equality in Warsaw, it was quite uh, okay because our like uh, uh, former mayor, the one who I was running against uh, she was uh, uh, she was woman. And uh, she was a woman working in a bank before, and uh, she had a rule that in most uh, like um, in most posts connected with finances, she had female directors, professional female directors, not the male di directors. So we have the director who was responsible, for example, for nursery houses, and female director responsible for finances. In this kind of uh, surrounding, uh, it's easier. Uh, it's easier to work. It, it's easier to play this all this like uh, uh, sexual games. But uh, uh, in Warsaw, we have one politician. Um, uh, she's from the like Liberal Party. She's at the moment 25, and she's been active in politics since she was like 15 or 16 or 18, very young. And she's so beautiful that when you look at her, you you ask yourself whether she's real. Uh, she, she has this kind of typical uh, beauty, and um, and it's really hard for her because uh, they often tell her that she is too beautiful to represent someone. She's too beautiful beautiful to be a spokesperson because people won't treat her seriously, uh, and. Um, of course, when there is a woman who is like ugly, she will uh, uh, hear the similar thing that she is not uh, nice looking enough to be a kind of uh, spokesperson. So things like this uh, still uh, still happen. I think that we are um, even if if even if we manage uh, to go through, we are. Uh, we have to face some conversation that my male colle colleagues uh, would never uh, face. For example, who would ask male politician uh, why he is not coming home at 4 p.m. to take care of his kids? No one, probably, or maybe not in our uh, not in our region. Like uh, in Poland, you can hear uh, questions about uh, um, connecting role of the mother and the role of the politician. And the role of the father and the role of the politician? No. So uh, this this is this is the thing. Or even if you were often look in the biographies uh, or the questions to the interviews that you are more as more often 
ask about like, like your uh, private life, which is like uh, sometimes it's relevant when it's because private is political, but in most of these cases it's completely ir irrelevant and uh, it takes the, the attention from things which are you know, professional, which are the knowledge that you want to share, your like political postulates and other things. Do you guys want to add? Maybe just I, I already yeah said something about how. <laughs> How, t how difficult is it to, to be a, a representative in a in a council where they're all men, where all men are but uh, uh, what I wanted to say is uh, how actually I think Hannah maybe you can disagree if you think but uh, I think that like entering the institution and uh, uh, when we started to be like politicians it kind of encouraged us like women to to do different kind of work than we did before in our uh, organizations and NGOs. Because before, like, men were predominantly doing like the theory and women in our organization were predominantly like did the, the organizational work. And uh, less women actually talk on the panels, less women were like in the media and... But now we had also a zip model uh, in Zagreb and Ash. And now we actually, yes, we have women in politics. And now, yes, we are talking, we are going to the panels, we are in the media. It's, I think it's kind of the, the situation is like changing. I'm sure that like many women who are activists for like many years are now more encouraged to, to like to, to, to think and to say what they think. Uh, yeah, I think that, that the, these uh, sleazy uh, right-wing guys, for instance, that are in the c councils with us, and for instance, when I was elected into the council, the president really wanted to kiss me with, very, uh, with his mouth on my cheeks, very sensually. Uh, but I think these kind of enemies are less insidious that, that, than our own enemies that we all carry inside. I still feel, although everyone is trying, that in our party as well, it's somehow it always happens that, that women are the ones that are doing the notes uh, of the meeting, that women are the ones that will call 20 numbers and write uh, 100 emails and uh, you know organize things and uh, the, the men will uh, talk about uh, important things and, and, and people are really aware of that uh, so, uh, and it happens that in our meetings uh, guys are talking and they're very you know serious and and some sometimes women cannot uh, have their uh, voice heard and then someone says okay guys now you talked for 10 minutes we will stop this and they're like okay 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 but still we have to remember this all the time because if we don't it's happening between us who are aware of this so we don't have to be afraid of these old wolves but of our own men <laughs> yes Okay, and now we go to the, to the title of this panel, which is, uh, this is all impossible in Eastern Europe. So, um, as far as I imagine, all, all of us who are here on this stage, and probably everyone who is in this room, is, um, is um, imagining a kind of city that is sustainable, socially just, um, participatory, good for its citizens, not good for profit, you know, full of housing, parks, and bike lanes, probably. Um, and we have seen examples in, in Western Europe of municipalities, of local decision makers, governments actually implementing such policies. So my question to you is, um, is this possible or is this impossible in Eastern Europe? And uh, why and how? And I think Lanka would be the last one on this, on this round of questions. So... Um, so you guys start on, on that side. Sorry if you weren't prepared for this. But Lenka has a presentation that she wants to share. I think everything is possible, and, uh, but um, step by step. And probably like learning from each other, from like countries in the region, it's easier than uh, trying to implement things from um, cities w which are acknowledged as cities with different culture, political culture. Like for example, you've got uh, here Great Lanes, the the ones and like in uh, Amsterdam, and they call like this Vonerts. So and you've got like pavement and the street on one level, and there are trees between cars, and it's very 
nice and flat, you don't have this uh, annoying pavements and the wheelchair cannot go through. And this is what I'm fi fighting for on the local uh, level because I'm still a local activist fighting for a safer street uh, I live on. And uh, showing that something like, like this is uh, in Budapest, uh, it's uh, probably easier than uh, putting it as a whole package, as, as you s said. That in this image of the perfect district, perfect city, and you have to have it all or you have nothing. Probably taking it by piece by piece. In Poland, it was quite um, interesting because uh, in Poland, uh, we have 38 million people living and more or less five up to ten cities uh, who are like leaders of change. And they are leaders of change in different topics. For example, uh, ten years ago, it was impossible to think that we have the participatory budgeting. Because it was something from the uh, Porto Alegre, quite far, uh, s s South America, uh, not, not here. And then uh, we had like one very persistent guy, whose name is Marcin Gervin, who said, we'll make it in Sopot City. Sopot is one of the small uh, cities, the seaside part of the three city. And he managed. And when he managed to do it in the city when you have like uh, 50,000 citizens, then out of sudden, different uh, cities in Poland, in the same legislative system, they started to take it away. The same was with the uh, uh, local bike, sy bike system and with many, many things that you implemented as a prototype. And then you split it, uh, then you try to put forward uh, like a positive, uh, positive virus but not the whole model for sustainable mobility based on the idea of shared mobility when you have local cooperatives which are only co a way how you can get the shared mobility because you killed all the, cor all the corporation. But you start with the uh, s small points, having this big vision uh, in your head. And recently I was uh, like uh, reading fascinating books uh, by uh, Adam Grant and it's uh, an English title, it's called um, Outliers. And he talks about like two strategies, like one strategy is talking about this big picture to showing people the vision that we are heading uh, to mobilize them. But sometimes you have to hide the vision and you say, oh, we only want this. We only want uh, this piece, uh, this technical solution, no ideology behind. Because when people uh, uh, see the bigger picture, they say, no, it's impossible here. Look at the, look at the street, look what is how dirty it is here, how many like ads everywhere, and uh, what a, a spatial house, uh -uh, we won't manage. But when you say we only want this small law, and then we'll see. Sometimes it's, uh, it's working, uh, working more. So, uh, answering your question, I think like everything is possible, but uh, uh, like the strategy that you are implementing sh should be well knitted to the local context and local discussions and local something. What the uh, it's often called like this critical passage points. So the moment that you have to go through, and then it's easy. Is it possible? I. I think yes. I think we, <laughs> we wouldn't get into politics uh, if we didn't think it, it was possible. And um, and uh, uh, when we were building our campaign and like uh, defining this and grounding this political platform, we were like re really inspired by the uh, by the Barcelona and Madrid. Uh, even now we are uh, doing it on the national level <laughs> and we uh, we have a name of the new <laughs> political platform which is called Podemos in Croatian. <laughs> no, just uh, we are laughing at it. So anyway, we were inspired, but then we realized that <laughs> we realized that uh, that we have our own context and that we have to uh, like form the, our uh, like uh, actions and like this uh, political. Uh, uh, activity in a way which is like suitable to our context and so i was talking already before when we realized who 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 are our, our voters so it's not the same as in barcelona or madrid we we knew that like disappointed social democrat voters are our voters and then we can through them we can enter the the city assembly so there are like many different situations which we realized we have to like apply to our context 
but the but the, the like the idea the the goals we want to uh, authority uh, to achieve yeah uh, yeah I think we can do it it's like a, a long run but yes. <laughs> So uh, it's about big change in small steps. Uh, uh, I really agree that you have to take the actions uh, the, your, your uh, neighbors are prepared for. And sometimes you have to convince them to support you, to give them some appetizers. And then they will uh, want more, definitely. So how we did it uh, in uh, Prague 7. I'm responsible. This is a beautiful part of the city. Uh, this is a historical Prague, so this is just behind uh, the former fortification. And uh, there are also big brown fields in the middle of this city. We have a river port, and we are uh, uh, we have the river everywhere. Uh, important thing was that yes, we have derelict public spaces. But there is always a place for change. So even if uh, the surrounding of the metro station is really not nice, you can take some small steps to change it. This was very important to show. And then uh, if you have a square where nothing is happening, uh, then it's quite easy to make the things happen and to help, your, uh, to help the citizens or the NGOs who are active uh, in your district to, uh, to offer them the space for free uh, so, they can, uh, so they can go there, so they can have a regular actions uh, in the public space. And of course, then you get uh, some um, uh, complaints from the people who are living in the surrounding and they were uh, used to a very calm surrounding, and which is not there anymore, but we think that life brings also safety, that you don't need the cameras uh, to ensure safety. Um, we have, of course, some big opportunities, uh, which we can't solve with the big, without Big Prague, but they are, at the same time, uh, also a big problems for us. And uh, here you see, uh, and this is also my uh, responsibility, uh, to ensure that once after almost 200 years, we will continue with the urban fabric, which was settled already 200 years ago. You see that th those two parts, they were meant to be connected, although there was a huge railway station, and now we are working step by step on the connection, although the majority of the land was sold to private investors. So we, as a, ci as a city district, we have very, uh, small influence on what will be there. The city of Prague has much bigger influence, but we managed to uh, somehow start to discuss with the big land owners what will be there. Um, this is uh, uh, one example what you can really do. So what real steps you can take. Public space uh, is, uh, as we think, the most precious value we do have in our cities. And this was the project which was prepared were, and agreed by the previous political representation. Actually, this land belongs to District 7, so it's our land. But 10 years ago, there was a treaty signed, which is giving the land for 99 years for very low sum of money to a private company. And uh, this was the building they wanted to build there, uh, which is primarily a shopping center. Uh, we had very limited uh, space for change. But what we did, we did is this. There is a still shopping center inside. This was unfortunately not possible to change. 
but plus there is some administrative space. There, uh, there is a medical. There are doctors in in this upper uh, part of the building, and as you can see, there is not a dead wall facing the street, but there is a something which you can always convert to something else. Uh, so this is this is the change you can do, and this was uh, this was seen by our neighbors first as something you just can't achieve because it was already done, it's settled, they have all the permissions. But still, you, you have to try it. So, because uh, uh, we are the ones who are responsible for gardening uh, the public space. Uh, the second, second picture and second very small change with, uh, we d didn't need money for, are the spaces along the river. Unfortunately, in Prague, some spaces along the river are in a, a private, are, are a private property because they have a factories which went up to the river. But even if it's a public, uh, if it's a private property, the river is not a private property. So it took a year to convince the uh, owner of the land to destroy this wall and to make a very simple, very low cost uh, passage. This was there before. And this is a picture taken after uh, two months after the change. Yeah. Uh, immediately, there were thousands of people walking along the river, even if there is basically nothing. Yeah. Uh, and we also used uh, the spaces uh, near the river to change uh, this former no-go area uh, to a pleasant space, just with the help of a group of neighbors who wanted to have their the urban gardening, and it's working perfectly. Again, urban gardening five years ago, it was like, no, it can't be in Prague, you know, you're just crazy, it's something which will never happen. Uh, something else, how to take another small steps from ferry to bridge. Uh, this will be uh, a pedestrian bridge which is planned on the site for 40 years almost. Uh, and uh, the city of Prague, five years ago, they told us uh, there is no need for the bridge. So we organized a small ferry uh, which went this way and which was extremely successful. So around 60,000 people every year is taking this ferry, which definitely proved that the bridge is necessary. So then uh, an international architectural competition was organized and we will have this pedestrian bridge. But without this appetizer, without proving that there is a, a need for the bridge, we would have nothing. Yes. And the last one, uh, there was a need for uh, public uh, space, for public buildings, because Prague 7 never had a proper town hall, its own town hall. So uh, we are now building one, and uh, we are also repairing and reusing the rest of the flats, which are still owned by the city. And also, and this is the last picture, uh, this was the old water tower of Latna, which was uh, meant for private offices and we changed this project and this is now space for children for after school activities and it's kindergarten. So uh, the whole space is open to, to everyone. And uh, this all in a situation where city district has almost no money or all the money are already distributed to the education and some other things the city districts simply have to do. Uh, you can always take some small steps and to change the approach. And maybe this is the reason why we were, we were elected again uh, with uh, additionally 12% to the previous ones. So now it's, uh, it's uh, let's say, increased responsibility. Thank you. Um, now we will open the floor to your questions or comments or contributions. Most, most van az, hogy, hogy lehet még egy kicsit kérdezni, vagy hozzászólni, kritizálni, véleményezni. 
és nem tudom, hogy a Robi itt van-e valahol a mikrofonnal. Ott van. Ki az, aki segít nekünk a mikrofonban? Gyuri. Szóval van-e a... Aha. Szuper. Egy, kettő, három. Szu... Jó, négy, öt. Jó, akkor kezdjük a Bettivel, és aztán így megyünk sorba, ahogy jöttetek. Már nem mindenkinek látom az arcát, csak a kezét. Hi. Can, can you hear me? You. Hi, I'm Betty, a community organizer from Hungary, and I would like to ask you about your relation to the movement, to your activist friends. Did it change after you became a politician? How did it change? How do you nurture the relations with the movement, or do they consider you as a politician, part of the establishment? So is this a question, because Joanna, I think, already mentioned uh, losing like a majority of her friends. It is, a, it is a question. To yes. her as well, but, um, but to everyone she, else? Or? Yeah, she started to talk to about, talk about it, it, and this is and to I'm the others. And I'm interested in this yes, cool. topic more. Anna says she, she never uh, had uh, friends activists, so <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, like I said, we, are, we still perceive ourselves as activists and we are still part of the movement. We are in the, in the local districts and neighborhood councils and also we have four people in city assembly, but actually we are, like, uh, we are, we are still part of the organizations we were before. Organizations who, actually the, 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 the interesting thing, thing was that when we formed the platform uh, we did uh, we, we, we took a capital like a social capital and networking we we did through the through uh, through our organizations but we decided to form a platform from the from, from the individuals so so later it cannot be connected with the uh, with the organization we are from uh, but uh, but still uh, most of the people who were uh, activists uh, in Zagreb, and, uh, who are in Zagreb and who were activists, are still uh, part of this uh, of the movement and of the organization. And we are still actually doing the same thing. We are still addressing the same questions. We are still part of the same struggles. We are still uh, connected to uh, these um, uh, neighborhood initiatives for which are like uh, fighting for public spaces and so kind of nothing changed except that we uh, entered the institution and like I said before, we finally have the, the informations we didn't have before. And now we are, like Hannah said, we are mosquitoes who are just like want more, 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 more. And so, <laughs> no, no, more, more in a way, like more justice, more everything. I don't think I've lost some friends uh, of course, my friends are um, really sometimes quarreling with me. They are complaining. Uh, they are asking uh, uh, questions which are sometimes not comfortable for me. But uh, this is healthy, I think, to to keep the people who are not, not afraid, who are always saying you you're completely stupid. What what you did there? It's something which you lost your mind or whatever. So this is, I think, very important and healthy that you uh, that you still have your fr your your friends. Um, and I ha I have uh, I have to say that um, there there is a lot of people if you're uh, by the power who wants to be your friend. Yeah. So this is maybe much harder than than to. I'm not losing my my old friends. You are nice. I just okay to, if we move to be to really next. careful uh, with the new ones. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if we move on to the next question, Joanna? Can I just add one thing? I don't know. It's funny. <laughs> but like, like the the motto of our campaign was like w with one leg in the streets and with the other leg in the institutions. And we kind of we knew it then, and we know now that th 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 we can only succeed if we are doing it like that, like combined, connected. Szentem a Marci, igen. De a Marci volt a második, úgyhogy próbáljuk. Köszi. Okay, thank you. Um, I would be interested in your, on your views on uh, how your politics versus, and activism could be transferable to smaller cities and even rural communities as you all come from, from a capital city in which the story is a bit 
perhaps different. Uh, de definitely in Czech Republic, how, how we went uh, to the power, uh, this is a, a way which was uh, used uh, by, uh, by us in Prague, which was extremely exhausting because uh, for the whole Prague you had to co we had to collect 100,000 signatures and addresses and the emails of the people who uh, are who supported us and, and wanted us to run for election. But if you have a smaller city, it's really easy. So, and this is an official a part of the voting voting law. So you have to always collect 70% of the uh, number of inhabitants of your village or your city, and then you can run for local elections. I mean, it seems to me that uh, these uh, 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 districts uh, some somehow function uh, like smaller cities, and it's it's f what we realized in our campaign and later when we. G came to power is that you have uh, it's good to have a crisis situation something that you can unite people uh, around like we want our park we don't want uh, the the city tower being turned into private offices so, so something in a smaller city that is really a big issue concerning a bigger number of people and and you push this thing forward and sometimes somehow when people unite over this issue it's easier to win them over and maybe just to add like already now in croatia there are like in some other cities which are smaller cities there are like people who that like the activists who also entered the, their local uh, governments and they organized pretty similar as we did and uh, actually now we realize that we can like gather all of these political initiative which are like spread around the country in local levels on the national level in like a like political pl platform in the national level mm -hmm. I think the strategies are kind of similar because like in our congress of uh, urban movements and our like leftist network we have like small cities and big cities and what uh, one city was extremely interesting it's called Vadovice is the city where John Paul II was born and uh, they are really conservative and uh, in, in last election uh, one a guy who was uh, mm, fighting for uh, le legalizing uh, marijuana uh, anarchist and with his uh, cooperator the um, they really changed the city they changed the system of education they changed the public space they were doing similar things that uh, Aslenka was men mentioning uh, unfortunately uh, they lost but they lost because uh, all the people thought that it was obvious uh, their electorate got lazy and they thought that it's obvious that they will win again and they lost uh, uh, the presidential uh, elections so for the mayor of the city by 300 votes or something like this and uh, the council by 50 or something something so uh, and they were using similar strategies uh, s uh, small steps uh, huge narration a lot of promotion mm, in poland there's as well another network which is uh, called the network of the progressive mayors uh, and they are mayors of uh, small cities, the cities like the city of, of uh, Swupsk, when we had like in our last election the mayor who is like openly gay and like uh, two weeks ago he launched his new party which is called Spring, which is quite nice. And uh, he was building his uh, political electorate and uh, the basis for the party that he is just created now on the network of small uh, progressive cities and as well uh, village, uh, village, uh, villages around. You had like uh, uh, there were no big, uh, no big cities, and he was the politician who came to the city of Swobsk from the parliament. So uh, from this, I can say that it's, uh, uh, you can be successful uh, using the same strategies in different level. Uh, at the moment, like uh, the, the former deputy mayor won, uh, and now she's the next mayor of Swoops, and Robert Biedrin, because this is the name of the guy, he's uh, 
traveling around the Poland and uh, bringing to get people to, to his new party. And here it's uh, as well interesting because it's not only big city, small city, uh, village cities, uh, parliament, but the, as well it's like the, uh, moving between the very local local level because city of Swords is really sm quite small. And now they are starting the party, which first election w uh, would be the election to the European Parliament. And uh, and somehow we, somehow it works. Okay, for the rest of the questions, let's hear all the questions all together, and then you guys will pick which one you want to answer. There was another hand somewhere on there. Yes. So let's just hear the question, and then we go on to the other questions. Uh, hi. My question is basically is a follow-up question of Tessa's question, how does it work to be a woman in politics? Um, and you mainly talked about like difficulties you experience, and I'm curious about the potentials you see in being a woman there, and whether you can see any d uh, advantages or positive reactions, and especially what do you think, what is the perception of your voters, whether you may attract more like women probably to support you exactly because you may um, represent other issues, or you don't see such things. Thanks. We had a bunch of questions there. Uh, hi, my question is that uh, in Zagreb, how do you see your situation now? Do you have a real impact? And uh, if yes, uh, can you keep it or, you know, and, or even grow it in the future? And uh, since you're in the, you're in the council, uh, could you convince more people from other parties maybe? Uh, uh, people who were voting to different parties. And then I think two more there and then that's it. Uh, in He's going to speak in Hungarian. Hogy fölvegyek a fejükre a hallgatót. Azt szeretném kérdezni, hogy Rájöttetek arra, hogy az információhoz hozzá tudtok jutni, és hogy azt az információt igyekeztek megosztani. Változtattatok-e mást is, bevonjátok-e a döntésekbe a, a civil lakosságot? Tehát, hogy a módszerekbe tudtok-e, attól, hogy aktivisták voltatok, tudtok-e bevinni új módszereket abba, hogy, hogy hogyan működjetek az önkormányzatban? És akkor még ott volt egy kész, szerintem Ági előtt, aha. Um, what do you find the biggest threat in your journey that you have to reflect on basically constantly? So to, in order to stay successful, at least manage to get the results that you are aiming for. Thank you. The biggest threat? Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's hear the two of you from Zagreb because you had two very specific questions. One about the impact and the other one about methods. But you can also reflect on the other ones, just let's have you all, all at once. Uh, yeah, every uh, time. Uh, about the impact, I think that uh, we, are, we, are, we have been lucky with the guy that we chose to be our representative in the city council, uh, Tomislav Tomasevic, because uh, I think that in, in these nearly two years, he some, somehow he has uh, pushed himself forward uh, to be one of the main attackers of our uh, mayor. Uh, and he has really become really, really prominent in terms of, uh, of uh, being uh, very uh, vocal about his criticism, very well informed. That there has been statistics uh, over uh, people who speak in the city council and uh, by far he is the the most, uh, um, he speaks the most, and mostly attacking the mayor. And he was even uh, thrown out of the city council by bodyguards once, which is so something that people uh, who were uh, very, um, you know, the, the uh, uh, SPD voters, the social democratic voters, they were ki kind of suspicious about him in the beginning. Oh, uh, you know, th th these people will, at first you will have no seats in the city council, then we got one, then you will get lost, you will not know what to do, you're just activist. And now when he has this, not just this momentum before the elections, but for nearly two years he hasn't uh, subsided in his, uh, in his strength, 
I, and he's the most visible part of our party, I think that, that we are gaining uh, support, mostly because of him, I have to say. Do you want yes, to reflect on even, the activist yes. methods? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just like even now the media call him the like the leader of the of the opposition in Zagreb, which is like, and he's only one, and there's a lot of them. And but also I think we have uh, we had an an impact on the on the lower level in the district and the neighborhood council, and it is connected to to the methods. Of course, we are in the opposition, and there are like four of them in the the assembly and only one or two people in the local district or neighbor neighborhood councils. But uh, one of the main uh, message uh, uh, in our uh, program and during our campaign was that we want to change the politics and to, 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 to want, want to change the, how the politics is being perceived and how it's being done. And uh, what we said is like that we want, want to open to spa uh, a space for people to make decisions about uh, the, the concrete and uh, abstract problems that, that are uh, ref uh, related to their lives. And uh, of course, we are, we are in the opposition, so it, it is uh, impossible to do it in a way. Like, okay, now we are going to change the, the model of the decision making model. But uh, on the other ha hand, what we did is uh, even before they come, and tomorrow we are going, uh, we are going to talk only about this. But uh, before the uh, during the campaign, we were uh, connected to many uh, um, initiatives, neighborhood initiatives. But uh, one was one to one. We were like really connected to. And later, after we also, uh, there were like two neighborhood initiatives. Uh, we are we are going to talk about the subjects tomorrow, um, which we kind of uh, we 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 connected to them. Our activists, people from Zagreb and Ash, and we kind of together with them we uh, made a campaign in one uh, for uh, against the the building of the skyscraper and saving the park and uh, in the other one it was uh, like destroying the the the, the, the the square in the in the city center, but uh, what actually we did is uh, since we entered the institution, we <laughs> realized that there is like one uh, possibility uh, which was never used in Zagreb before, and that is that we can organize like a neighborhood assembly, which is like formed from all of the people who want to uh, uh, to take part and who want to be involved. And it actually it is written in the in the statutes of the of the city and of the district. And so uh, actually it was like the first for the first time we organized uh, like this uh, neighborhood assembly, and people actually had the opportunity to say we don't want that. And at actually the thing they said was the conclusion of the, uh, of the city, of the neighborhood council and later of the, of the, uh, the on, on the district level. So of course there is no a lot of space, but yes, we, we were, like I said, the main message was like, we want more participation and actually, yes, we kind of uh, did it, like in these two examples. Thank you, and we are running out of time, so for Johanna and Lenka, you can pick which one you want to answer. You, we had a question about uh, be, what's the potential in being a woman in politics, and the other was what's your biggest threat in your journey as a politician? Johanna, you would like to start? Mm, I think the biggest threat is that you will lose your allies, that... Uh, when you are moving from outside to inside, uh, often the outside, like your uh, mother surrounding or activist movement is not always very happy. And um, if you won't find the uh, allies uh, inside this, the new structure, uh, you lose everything. And uh, this is probably the biggest threat. That when you are uh, finally in position in doing something, uh, you won't be able to do it. And this is the end. Uh, so, one more the this uh, woman question. Uh, I'm hearing all possible comments, like from you are quite rational for a woman. 
up to uh, I'm really happy uh, to see you in that position because uh, I can see that my daughter can be uh, whoever she wants to be. Uh, so it's it's really on this wide wide scale from from uh, in insults, but they are meaning it in a good way. Yeah, you you really. Um, and uh, the threats, uh, I have, I have a, a personal one because uh, one day I would like to be back in my profession mm -hmm. and this is a question of time. So when I should get back because now I have a feeling that I am contributing to the uh, good development of my, of my district. So when is the right way and on a more personal level, I am the mother of three, and this job is really time demanding. And and you have to spend evenings somewhere because it's so. Yeah, and this is maybe heading once again to the question, who will be at home? <laughs> and there have to be someone. Okay, thank you very much, and our time is really up. Um, so thank you very much for your participa participation. It was really exciting to me to hear your answers. Uh, and I will switch to Hungarian now, if that's okay. És nagyon köszi nektek, hogy, hogy eljöttetek, és végighallgattátok ezt a beszélgetést, és ez a konferencia még holnap is folytatódik. Holnap kilenckor kezdünk, és párhuzamosan fog menni nyolc különböző műhelybeszélgetés. Aki regisztrált előre, fog tudni ebédet is kapni, illetve minden bizonyal mindenkinek fog jutni tolmácskészülék, aki, aki szeretne ilyet, és utána a... A, a műhely beszélgetések fél hatig ö, tartanak, és utána hattól nyolcig pedig egy magyar kerekasztal lesz, ahol olyan embereket hívtunk el, akik Magyarországon próbálják meg ugyanezeket a dolgokat megvalósítani, amiket most itt a külföldi vendégeinktől hallottunk. És aztán az utolsó programunk az pedig vasárnap lesz, amikor is ö, hánytól? Ö, fél hattól vetítjük az Adát polgármesternek című filmet, ami egy csodálatos és inspiráló film, úgyhogy várunk mindenkit szeretettel, oda nem kell regisztrálni, de ha véletlenül nem regisztráltatok holnapra, akkor is gyertek nyugodtan, mert ebédet nem tudunk garantálni, de helyet és tolmácskészüléket minden bizonyal fogunk tudni adni, úgyhogy nagyon köszi, hogy eljöttetek.